recording. All right, cool. So Charles, uh, thanks for the thanks for the shout out. Um, I think this is one of the thirty two announcements uh, that we're making during the summit. Uh, I don't know the exact number, uh, uh, number but there's a, there's an incredible amount of uh, of interesting material that is coming out, um, and I am going to be part of it. So my name is Alex Alplorn. Um I've been part of the parameter um, uh, live stream, and I've been at the uh, staple operator um, focus group. Um, so some of you might have seen or recognized me, uh, but I noticed during the um, uh, uh, during the parameter live stream that um, uh, that some of you actually might, uh, might not know me. So I thought I'd give you guys a bit of my uh, a bit of my background. Uh, before we dive, uh, we dive deeper into into this announcement. So again, my name is Alex Aplorn. Um I'm a product manager for third party integrations, um, which is mostly Adrestia and uh, the Explorer. Um, I started I studied at the Applied University in Amsterdam, electrical engineering. I did uh, social social psychology at the Napier University in Edinburgh, and then I went back to uh, electrical engineering and control systems at the Technical University of Eindhoven. I've been in high um, high tech uh, for about three years, um, predominantly at uh, Tyco Electronics, and after that, um, I spent about two years uh, two years in finance, trying to trying to find my place. Uh, that didn't exactly work out, so uh, I, um, I I went into blockchain because obviously it's a, it's a far more fascinating space. Um, I've been working in blockchain for about four years now. Um, and one a bit a years of that, I've been working for for IOHK. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's a bit of my a bit of my background. So obviously, I've seen I've seen the rising tides and the changes that uh, that were happening uh, in this space. And it's kind of the thing that I wanted to talk to you to you guys about, just to sort of give a bit of a background um, uh, about the philosophy of this um, of this project. So um, uh, okay, here we go. So we all know we all know the founding story. I don't want to I don't want to uh, uh, bore you too much about that. But obviously, it's 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 where we started, and it's kind of where I wanted to um, uh, to return a bit. So obviously, two thousand eight, um, the Bitcoin white paper was released, um, sort of like giving giving rise to a new philosophy of um, you know like self sovereign um, ownership of of um, funds and money. Um, which is which is great because it, it put the power and the responsibility back to the people um, in, in removing it from uh, from governments. So um, about a year later, uh, the Bitcoin blockchain was launched, and um, the two years that followed after that were were extremely extremely interesting. So the first year uh, that came after that, uh, obviously the the, uh, and the the pizza story is very famous. Um, and some guy paid. Uh, twenty five thousand uh, Bitcoin in order to get a pizza, uh, two pizzas, and, and a Coke. Um, you know, which which was the the first sort of like publicly recorded um, uh, purchase purchase of goods in exchange for for Bitcoin, which was a, which was a phenomenal event. Um, on top of that, uh, you know, we did the, in that time the first exchange uh, actually launched, um, and actually the first block explorer was launched. Um, and and that's sort of where for me the interesting part starts to happen. So what we what we notice is is that um, you know we had this um, we had this phenomenal new bit of technology. Uh, people started to use it, uh, and it attracted more people because obviously everybody was interested. Everybody wanted to see this. So um, you know like the the entry of a of an of an exchange and the entry of of an explorer basically meant that. Uh, the blockchain needed to be more accessible to 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 a wider audience. All right, so um, blockchain became more accessible. Bitcoin specifically became more accessible to to a wider audience, and obviously, you know, more people means bad actors. That's that's what you know, like half of the the the, the Bitcoin uh, story was was about. Um, you know, like not only being able to deal with good actors, but always also being able to deal with bad actors. Um, so yeah, we saw changing tides. So obviously, there was the did the Mt. Gox hack. Um, you know, Bitcoin had a valuation of uh, of a billion dollars, um, and around that time, a lot of fraud and illicit behavior was happening. It, this, this is this is true. This is the case. 
Um, but the great part about it is, is that in the, in the two years that followed, uh, followed that, uh, we saw, we saw a lot of changes. So, you know, we, we saw the illicit behavior and, you know, we worked together in order to create better toolings, better, um, mechanisms in order to, to, to protect our community. So, um, that was actually the, the, uh, the era where, uh, the first Oracle started to, to emerge, uh, second generation, uh, blockchains with, uh, with smart contract capabilities, um, hardware wallets, which is obviously a big thing, uh, to protect your funds. And we saw um, uh, sort of like the, the diversification of, of exchanges, meaning that you know at that at in 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 2014 we have more than 500 um, exchanges that were listing various currencies. Okay, so um, what happened after that? So basically, you know, we had the, the second um, uh, uh, second generation chains. Uh, you know, we had uh, easier access to, um, uh, to, to, to cryptocurrencies. And obviously there was an, uh, was an explosion of adoption. Um, everything basically happened at the same time, like from, from 2016 going forward, uh, you know, like we had the ICO boom, um, you know, like various, um, uh, various applications started to happen. It was just, it was just an explosion of stuff happening. Um, and on top of that, obviously, um, uh, the Cardano chain. Uh, was launched. So the third generation uh, uh, blockchain blockchain was launched. So during that massive craze of of you know funds coming in, people trying to do stuff, um, you know, like a lot of stuff uh, worked and a, a lot of stuff failed. That's 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 what we know. Um, so I think that the period between 2016 and like 2018 was a, was a time of introspection. Um, you know, we started to deal with, with regulations. We started to deal with, uh, protection of, of, of customers. Um, and we started to deal with commercialization, commercialization of blockchain. Um, and, and that's a good thing, right? So commercialization basically means that we become more accessible to, to a wider audience. We become more usable for a wider audience. Um, consumer protection is, is not per se hindering technology. It's, it's making it more mature. It's making it more robust in order to, uh, uh, you know, like support a second wave, uh, the second wave of, of consumers. And we're seeing it now, um, you know, like we're, we're currently looking into applications like DeFi. We're looking at, um, supply chain. We're looking at specific charities that are, that are happening through the blockchain and creating transparency around that. Um, actually, I, I was reading an article this morning, um, about, uh, a number of the DeFi applications that, uh, that crashed because there was such a high demand for it, which is great. Um, it means that, you know, like we're starting to, to build usable applications, um, that, 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 you know, like that get massive amounts of adoption, which is interesting. Um, so I kind of wanted to take it, take it a step back and go back to, to 2016. So, um, since 2016, what we, what we noticed is, is that, um, you know, like we had, we had the, the, the multiple waves of, um, you know, like learning and improving and, you know, like from, from 2016 forward, what we're basically noticing is, is that, um, the adoption of blockchain is basically hindered by its usability and, and we all know this. So, um, in order for you, and, and I take the example of CryptoKitty, but obviously it's like any DeFi application, any sort of like any, any application that requires cryptocurrency. Basically, everybody needs to go through through the same process. So the process is basically for for a new user of blockchain, so not the existing users, but for a new user to use blockchain, um, you know, you need to make an exchange, like an account and an exchange. You need to hand over all your personal data. Uh, you need to do your KYC AML. Um, you know, you need to wait at least five days. Then you can buy like either Bitcoin or Ethereum. Then you need to convert that into the currency that you actually want, and then like send that over to your to your dap wallet and then at that point in time you can actually start using using the application which is you know like which is the, the current state of things and and the current state of things basically means that we're losing uh 97 of of all people that are are interested in blockchain that are interested in specific applications which is a massive drain of resources uh it's a massive drain of people um, uh, that want to participate in, in the blockchain system, but just can't, uh, because 
you know, like there's too many steps involved. Mm. All right. So why am I saying this? I think that's the that's the, um, uh, the, the question that probably is burning uh, on, on everybody's mind. So um, at Cardano and at IOHK, we have um, we have a we have a specific philosophy, right? We, we, we want to create financial inclusion for everybody. We want to create a decentralized uh, civilization. And by creating, by, by wanting to have a decentralized uh, uh, civilization, this means that um, a whole host of people are going to are going to join our our community, our you know blockchain ecosystem, and that means that um, uh, tooling and usability is going to just be more important every day that we continue. Every day we continue, more people are going to join, more people are going to be dependent on it. So there's going to be, you know, like usability, there's going to be like uh, uh, visibility, there's just going to be like intuitive interaction. So um, what we what we like to say is that IO is moving towards a, a decentralized civilization. And this means that all members of the society, of society need to be able um, to participate in, uh, in our blockchain platform. Um, this means that our tools uh, needs to be need to be accessible and intuitive, irrespective of people's means or infrastructure. Uh, this also means that our tools need to be more visual, they need to be more intuitive, and they need to be light in character. Um, so this means that we want to create a platform um, where anybody can go, uh, where they can manage their funds, where they can cast their votes, where they can manage their personal data. Um, and this all needs to be seamlessly integrated, um, between desktop, browser, and mobile phone. Um, because that's just, that's just how society works nowadays. Um, and that's, that's where we need to move towards. Um, so the tooling that we need, so we, we, we made a short list of the tooling that we, that we need and, um, how we'd like to, how we'd like to position these. Um, and it's, it's quite a bit. Like we we can't deny it. This is this is quite an ambitious roadmap. So, um, um, we we've created account structures. So, um, you know, for for um, let's say you know, commercial or for 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 everyday users, um, the majority of of the stuff that we're offering is obviously free. So, any data that you might want to have, that's obviously free. Any delegations that you might want to do, any DApps that you might want to use. Uh, any votes that you might want to cast, your light wallets, all that stuff is, is just for free. Um, it's for free in the rest of the world, so you know it's not going to be it's not going to be any different for us. Um, if you are going to be a more advanced user, if you're going to be more an extensive user, or you have um, you know like specific specific needs and requirements, and obviously we want to support that with specific tooling as well. Um, um, but yeah, we we will be we will be charging for specific services that you know we we need to do work on uh, in order to maintain it. Okay, so um, you know I've, I've made a short list here. Um, you know, blockchain data. You're like everybody. Everybody's aware of this. Um, you know, like this is sort of like the core feature, uh, which is the which is the um, the explorer bit. Okay, so um, in the in the obviously we we, we start to move towards um, towards Gogan. So um, you know, type of blockchain data is also smart contracts. It's also going to be multi currency, um, which is all the type of blockchain data that will become available. Um, but because we're we're moving to Gogan and because we are uh, launching smart contracts, um, you know, like smart contracts are powered by oracles. So um, one of the other elements of this of uh, of this platform is going to be is going to be uh, oracle information. Um, we will start to integrate decentralized identities um, that you can use on platform, but we also have um, resolver so that you can use it. Uh, on other platforms and that you can, um, you know, like have control over your, over your personal identity and, and share it and revoke the access to that personal identity to anybody that you, that you want. Um, obviously you will have the opportunity to, uh, uh, to make delegation choices to, to, to go through, uh, uh, you know, like stake pools and just like any background information that you might want to have in order to get to an informed delegation choice. 
All right. Um, Dapps is a very important one. So obviously, we'll we'll um, uh, as soon as as soon as this becomes becomes a reality. So you know, as soon as Gogan goes live, we'll start building an environment where we'll create some sort of a Dapp store, and you can you can just go to the website and you can you know sort of research and background check all all the all the Dapps that are that are available, um, and you know just uh, just sort of as a as a as a uh, uh, yeah as a, as a Dapp store technically yeah. Um, one of the other majors, the major major milestones that we're working together, uh, uh, working against, is obviously uh, Voltaire. So um, you know you'll be able to see all the ballots that are are available. You'll be able to cast your votes there. Um, you know, and you'll be able to interact with blockchain through through light wallets. So you know it's like easy and light to light to use. Um, and we'll also start uh, start implementing uh, custody solutions, hardware wallet, and and we have this additional feature which we're going to call uh, Node as a Service. Um, Node as a Service is basically made available for those people that might want to you know create DApps or you know like do other interactions with the blockchain but might not want to run the infrastructure. So we'll have a um, we'll expose an API that you're able to pull data from the chain and you know uh, uh, make transactions uh, to the chain. Uh, so these are obviously very exciting features and functionalities. Um, and you know we wanted to we want to start with a with a sort of like all encompassing name. Um, so um, we for now launched it as uh, Project Atlas. So that's uh, that's where we are uh, where we're going to. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be super exciting. Uh, there's a lot of work in uh, work in the pipeline. Um, obviously, we're going to do this iteratively. So um, we're expecting the uh, the first release of this in in the next uh, one or two months. Um, and yeah, we'll uh, we'll um, we'll make it we'll make this available to you. So we have some some mockups. Um, we're not uh, we're not we're not there yet, but at least we can give you sort of like a look and feel for this. Um, so obviously, we'll um, we'll allow you to create a um, uh, an account environment where you can manage your API keys, where you can see your delegation choices, where you can do uh, all the all the features and functionalities that you um, that you uh, that you can find on um, on Atlas. Um, so secondly, you know, we'll have uh, a rich data suite which will allow you to compare uh, compare stake pools with each other to see, you know, what the what the non myoptic utility is and where you would get the most rewards from. Uh, but you can also see sort of like the, the liveness of the chain. You can see, uh, you know, what kind of transactions are happening, like where the delegations are going to, what stake pools are performing well. All that kind of kind of information will become available. So obviously. This is milestone one. This is the, this is the first iteration, um, and the rest of the um, and the rest of the uh, uh, iterations will will follow in the following months. Um, yeah. So so if you're excited about this project, um, if you're interested in giving feedback, maybe su like supposing uh, uh, new features and functionalities, or if you want to be part of the um, beta testers. Uh, please reach out to me on either my email address or my Telegram handle. Uh, I'm quite responsive. Uh, I try to keep up with uh, with all the socials. Um, but yeah, thanks, thanks, um, thanks for being part of this, and uh, thanks for um, for uh, for listening. And if you want to reach out, that'd be greatly appreciated. All right, cool. Goodbye, everyone.